The Daily Code Snippet. This past week, we began to discuss CSS or cascading style sheets. This is a language that allows you to create rules that tell the browser how to display an element. So CSS applies the look and feel of your web page. We looked at how the same HTML code can appear with different CSS applied. In the first option, no CSS is applied and it is unstyled. Next, the same HTML code is designed with a top navigation. Lastly, the HTML code is restyled with a side navigation. During the week, we took a look at the history of the development of CSS. The main points were that CSS was developed at CERN, just like HTML, but by Hakon Wum Lee in 1994. In 1992, Peiwei had developed a browser called Viola with a style sheet language. Hakon published the first draft of the, his cascading HTML style sheets as Bert Boss was releasing the browser Argo, whose purpose was to make the internet accessible to scholars of the humanities. He collaborated with Hakon because the browser needed customized style sheets, but it also needed to have a style language general enough to apply it to markup languages other than HTML. So eventually the HTML was dropped and it became cascading style sheets. Competing CSS proposals continued to be debated, but Hakon and Bert's version was distinctive because it took into account the capabilities of the display device and the browser. They presented their work again in 1995, and eventually the W3C set up an editorial review board to ratify both HTML and CSS standards. By 1997, CSS had its own working group, and in 1998, CSS2 was released. After this, browser support drove CSS development, the first commercial browsers to support CSS were Microsoft's Internet Explorer 3, 1996, Netscape Navigator 4, and Opera 3.5 by Geert Iveroy, 1998. Opera boasted it could fit on a floppy. Hakon was impressed and joined as CTO. Opera's browser was primarily for mobile phones and freed the web from the desktop. The need for assessing cross Browser compatibility is a result of this early competition between companies, their browsers, and inconsistent implementation of web standards. Web designers have to spend time to make sure that their design displays comparably on all the different devices and browsers out there. Support for web fonts began with CSS2 with the ability to embed fonts by providing the font with a style sheet. It was only supported by Internet Explorer in its initial release. Only a few fonts had a copyright that allowed distribution on the web, Microsoft and Monotype developed a proprietary EOT embedded open type format, which contained the URL inside the font to limit the use of the font in that document only. But by 2008, more designers were releasing their fonts for free on the web. Hakon lobbied that browsers support them, TrueType and OpenType fonts, while BERT convinced Microsoft to release a royalty-free version of EOT. But the W3C had to release another format called WOFF because EOT used a different compression algorithm from the one widely used at the time. So if you were wondering why you have to load so many types of font when embedding a font, this is why. TTF, OTF, EOT, WOFF. Web-based font services like Adobe Typekit and Google Fonts are more popular now. After reviewing the history, we moved on to discuss the box model for CSS and the approach of using internal versus external CSS. So the box model in CSS means that each element is treated as if it has an invisible box around it. CSS allows you to create rules so that you can control the presentation of each individual box and its contents. This illustration shows an HTML element, a text element, with a border mark. The padding is the space from the border to the contents. Increasing the padding often helps the legibility. The margin is a space from the border to the next element, so widening the margin adds space between elements. In this example, we see a browser image with a header and a paragraph text. We also look at how it is seen by CSS, i.e. with invisible boxes around each element. This element also shows the difference between block and inline elements. Block elements always start on a new line. Inline elements flow within the text and do not start on a new line. Block elements are marked in blue while we have the inline elements marked in green. Some elements are represented in our example while others are not. 
So for example, we see the body element, number one, encloses all the elements, and it is a block element. Our H1 heading element, number two, is also a block element, as would be H2 to H6 elements that are not represented. And finally, P or paragraph text number three are also block elements. We do not have a div element represented, but it is considered a block element. We have two inline elements represented, italic text or the I element, number one, and two link or A elements, number two. Other examples of inline elements that are not represented are the B or bold element, the image element, the M element, and the span element. When adding CSS to our HTML documents, we can take two approaches. One way is to use internal CSS, which is where the CSS rules are d embedded directly into our HTML page. We include our CSS rules directly in the head of the, of the HTML page and enclose all of our CSS rules in a style element. The second and preferred way is to use external CSS, where we link our HTML page to an external style sheet via link element. The href attribute specifies the file path to the CSS file, and the rel attribute tells the browser the relationship between the linked file and the HTML document. In this case, we are linking a style sheet. Here is how it would look in our code. External CSS is preferred because the goal is to separate content from appearance. Also, we can link multiple CSS style sheets to our HTML page via separate link elements. Internal CSS is appropriate when we have a single, when we have a simple single web page site. With more pages, an external CSS style sheet can control the look of all the HTML web pages in a site. When we want to make a style change, we would only have to adjust the style sheet rather than make changes to multiple pages. Presented by Designers Learn Code.